And now at this point, uh, I'm really happy to invite the next speaker officially. <laughs> That's yay! It's it's Mirko, and uh, uh, so today we're going to learn about Kiwi, a cross-platform Python uh, framework for GUI apps development. And I'm really interesting to see interested to see uh, what kind of cool things you're going to show us with Kiwi today. So if you don't mind, I'll put your slides up on screen and. Uh, let you stalk your let you talk no, let you start your presentation so here you go thank you thank you very much so we are here today to talk about kiwi the open to python app development framework with kiwi you can build and distribute beautiful python cross-platform gui apps with ease but let's start with something super easy who i am i'm mirko i'm based in monza italy as as my pycon it 2022 badge says from Monday to Friday, I'm full stack Pythonista. And during weekends and evenings, I'm a Kiwi core developer. Um, I'm not alone in Kiwi. We are a group of eight core developers at the moment, quite widespread all around the world. Uh, we are from Europe, India, South Africa, and USA. Uh, but we are, that's a real Kiwi team, yeah? We have a lot of contributors, all uh, around all the um, repositories uh, for the Kiwi organization. And we also have the opportunity to have some sponsors and supporters via Open Collective. So really thank you, contributors, sponsors, and supporters of Kiwi. You are doing great. But let's start with some history about Kiwi. Well, I guess we can consider this comet as the Kiwi boarding. So Kiwi is, is more than 12, 12 years uh, ago. Um, but everything started from a product which Tito, which is Mathieu Viabel, was already working at time, 15 years ago. So a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Kiwi is made for today and tomorrow. Novel input methods such as multi-touch have become increasingly important. We created Kiwi from scratch specifically for this kind of interaction. Well, the statement has been out there quite a long time ago to our documentation and still look fresh. Even with the most important things, may have changed meanwhile as the framework evolved with the text itself. Okay, Mirko, I got it. But why you use Kiwi every day and why we should care about it? Well, Kiwi is called platform. So you only have to write once and then you can deploy anywhere, almost anywhere. Well, almost is iOS, Android, macOS, Linux, and Windows. And also, Kiwi is fast. Time critical functionalities are implemented inside of. And also, it's GPU accelerated, obviously, when it makes sense. And we also implement intelligent algorithm to minimize costly operations. Um, Kiwi is mission friendly. Kiwi is released under the MIT license and is 100% free to use and is professionally developed, bigger and maintained. Companies and individuals, like the one I work for, the company, are using Kiwi for their projects every day. Um, well, Kiwi makes Pythonistas happier because as a Pythonist, we are open-minded, so we are probably good to switch to another language to develop mobile Dex GUI apps. But if we can just avoid that, I think we, are, we all have a super smile on our face. Kiwi as a complete tool set. Kiwi Kiwi is the visible part of the app. Well, I was in Rotterdam this August and I needed to write some slides for Kiwi. I needed to explain to people that Kiwi, the part you are using to making your UI, is only a part of the Kiwi ecosystem. And a lot of tools under the hood make that possible. So let's have an overview about the tool set. <coughs> I have what I call Bean Cross Platform on one side and the packaging part on the other side. The Bean Cross Platform is PyGenius, PyObjects, Player. And on the other side, we have a Python for Android, Kiwi US, Kiwi SDK Packager, and Bulldozer. And yeah, we have also other nice projects such as Addison and Kivan. But let's start with the first part of the tool set. PyGenius. PyGenius is a Python model 
to us as Java classes, as Python classes, using the Java native interface. Well, Mirko, I'm writing a Python app. Why I need to use Java? I don't want to use Java. Well, sometimes, usually when you are making an Android app development, you will find yourself to integrate your Python app with something exposed by the Java API. Uh, as an example, something exposed by the Android API or a third party library, like for example, OpenSignal. So with PyGenius, you have only have to import the Autoclass helper, and then by using the Autoclass helper, you have access to the underlying class in Java, like the example shows. And similarly to PyGenius, we also have PyHubJus. PyHubJus is a Python model for assessing Objective C classes as Python classes using the Objective C runtime reflection. So, like PyGenius, PyHubJus is for macOS and iOS, and you can use it to assess Objective C classes from Python side. And as the example shows, you only have to use the Autoclass helper to get the NSRF class, and then you can create an NSRF object and show it, like the example. So you can write your model from NSRF in your Python app. <coughs> Plugger. Plugger is a platform-independent API to use features commonly found on various platforms, not by the mobile ones, in Python. So, Import plier, plier.tds.speak, welcome to Kiwi. Well, TDS is text to speech, and if I run the script on my Mac, it actually says, welcome to Kiwi, a loud voice, without any extra dependency needed. And similarly to text to speech, we have access to accelerometer, audio recording, barometer, battery, Bluetooth, and so, so on. You can check the full OS co list comp compatibility at kiwi.com github.com slash kiwi slash player. And it leverages PyGenius and PyAbjus when needed. Um, packaging. We have Python for Android and Kiwi US. Both are packaging tools for Python apps on Android and on iOS. Mm -hmm. With both, you can create your own Python distribution with the needed models and dependencies and bundle it into an APK or a B or into an app which is able to run on iOS. So the question might be clear. So you just copy some dependencies and code in an artifact that's going on on Android or iOS. Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy, at least for us. Why is not it easy to package on Python mobile or app? Under the hood. We need to package a Python interpreter that's able to run on Android or iOS. We need to start a Python interpreter. Non-plain Python packages are not available on PyPy for Android or iOS. On iOS, we are required to start a link editing on the main executable, and not everything is available now you ask an Android, like a process. A processor is not available and not usable in iOS. And data scientists love libraries with Fortran. And no, IO Android doesn't have a PD get, and no, iOS doesn't have you, and many, many more issues. How we manage to fix it. And yeah, we can do better, and we will find later how the whole Python community can run. Well, the only thing you need to know is the one with my emoji and the robot. So able to change, I need to build my, my app, which has these dependencies, and then the chain starts to build it. And OK, let's do that. It's building. So then this is the, oh, the simple part. Under the hood, we are building a NOS Python 3 and a Python 3, which are of the same Excel version. And then, Plain Python packages are just pip installed via host Python on the site packages folder of your app. And non-plain Python or libraries like OpenSSL, yeah, we use the recipes. Recipes are basically a set of instructions which are able to cross-compile things to, go to place them into your app and get it running. Then everything, Python 3, Python packages, the libraries like OpenSSL and SDL2, I'll package it along with a bootstrap, which is SDL2 for Android or WebView or service, and on iOS we have SDL2, along with your code and assets into an artifact. Kiwi is the key packager. Kiwi is the key packager, builds macOS Kiwi app, 
which could be used as an alternative to standard installation with a skeleton to package macOS apps. It also builds key dependencies for Windows, such as SDL2, Glue, and Angle. And it builds the Kiwi packages for the Ubuntu PPA. You will probably never find yourself using Kiwi SDK package directly, but it's doing a lot of great things under the hood. <coughs> Bulldozer. Bulldozer is a tool for creating application packages easily. With one single Bulldozer the spec file, your app directory, which is describing the application requirements, Bulldozer will use the spec file to create a package for Android iOS, Windows, macOS, and Linux. So you only have to write in your CLI, Bulldozer, and the debug, deploy, run, which, is, which means, hey, Bulldozer, please build an Android artifact in the Mac mode and deploy it on the device and run it. Well, unfortunately, currently, it doesn't support all of the above-mentioned platforms yet. Android is fully supported and uses Python for Android under the hood. Mac OS is partially supported and uses Kiwi SDK package under the hood. High OS is partially supported and, Kiwi, and uses Kiwi iOS under the hood. On Windows and Linux, some help is wanted, but the alternative is Spy Installer as documented. And I'm, I'm quite sure that Linux people are fine to pip install everything. So we probably never need a packaging tool. Um, Mac OS is really near to a green track mark. And iOS may need a reward, as we found out that its code is really helpful during development. I'm also using Xcode during Kiwi AUS development. And the user may not want to complete this take on Bulldozer, so we need to make some changes. Finally, visible part of the iceberg, Kiwi Kiwi. Well, something easy. Installation. How we can install Kiwi? Pip install Kiwi, easy and effective. Um, we also offer install the alternative installation methods such as Sconda, or you can build it from source, or you can use the Kiwi app on macOS and the Ubuntu PPA. We also provide selectors via Pip, so you can even decide which dependencies to install. You can install the base dependency, the media, or the development dependencies, which I have by test. And on Windows, you can also select to use JustFamer, Angle, SDL2, and Glue. Architecture. Kiwi abstracts basic tasks, such as opening a window, displaying images and text, playing an audio, or getting a video feed from a camera, and so on. That makes the API both easy to use and easy to extend. Most importantly, it allows us to use specific providers for their respective scenarios in which your app is being run. As an example, on macOS, Linux, and Windows, there are different native API for different core tasks. So if I need to access the camera on iOS, I will use a view camera. If I need to access the camera on Android, we are going to use Camera X, and so, so on. The Kiwi the Lassani language. Kiwi language, Kiwi Lang, allows the developer to create a widget tree in a declarative way and to bind widget tree in the declarative properties to each other or to callbacks in another manner. It allows for very fast prototypes and agile changes to your UI. And it also facilitates separating the logic of your application and its user interface. Well, as I said before, I use it to write PHP things. And in PHP, you will probably find yourself to write a lot of things in, in the single thing, and then it's a complete mess. Well, so please use the Kiwi language when doing um, Kiwi development to separate your logic from your user interface. And like the example shows, we have creating a box layout in Kiwi language and then placing a label and a button in it. Events are important when developing an app with Kiwi and also with other GUI uh, frameworks. One of the most important place classes of the Kiwi framework is the Event Dispatcher class. This class allows you to register event types and to dispatch them to interest parties. The widget, animation, and clock classes are examples of event dispatchers. And event dispatcher objects depend on the main loop to generate and handle events. So we have the Kiwi main thread and then the Kiwi main loop. The Kiwi main loop 
takes the inputs and then the event dispatcher dispatch the event to the inputs parties. And sometimes you may want to, to schedule something with an interval or only once. And you can do that by via the clock, via the Kiwi clock. So from Kiwi clock, import clock, and then I set up my callback, which in this time only shows, hey, hi, at this day time, and then I schedule an event with an interval every 10 seconds. Well, by scheduling this, um, this event, I will have on my console, hi, at this day time, every 10 seconds. And I it can even cancel that event. Widget events. A widget has two default types of events. Property event, if your widget changes its position or size, an event is fired. And you, we also have widget defined events. But like an example, an event will be fired for a button when it's pressed or released. Properties. Well, at Kiwi we have numeric property, string property, list property, other property, boolean property, and so so on. These properties implement the observer pattern, and to use them, you have to declare them at class level. Like the example is really important. A lot of people are not doing like that, and it's not working. And they help you to isn't manipulate widgets defined in the Kiwi language. Automatically observe any changes in the dispatch function code accordingly, check and validate values, and optimize memory management. And yeah, each property by default provides an on underscore property name event to the scholar whenever the property state value changes. And if you want a piece of code to be called when a widget post property changes, well, you can just bind a function to it. Like the example, the example is plain it well. Layouts. Well, we are a UI framework, so layouts are important. Um, a key view, we have entry layout, where child widgets can be entered to top, bottom, left, right, and center. We also have box layout, where child widgets are, are, are arranged sequentially, neither vertical or horizontal orientation. A float layout, where child widgets are essentially unrestricted. And relative layout, grid layout, scatter layout, stack layout, and page layout. But Let's look at the canvas. Each widget has a canvas. It's basically a place to do one. The canvas is a group of drawing instructions that should be executed whenever there's a change to the widget graphical representation. And the canvas before and canvas after groups can be used to separate instructions based on when you want them to be executed. And you can add instructions either from Python code or from the Kiwi file. And if you are done for the Kiwi file, the advantage is that they are automatically updated when any property they depend on changes. In Python, you need to do that by yourself. And what the example shows, we have a box layout, and inside with this box layout, on the before group, we are creating a red around the rectangle. And then we are placing a label which says hi in it, which is full wide, and then we are placing an ellipse on top of it with the canvas after group, which is a blue ellipse at half the alpha value. We also have a lot of known layout UI components by default, button is included, like accordion, action bar, bubble, button, camera, carousel, checkbox, image, slider, spinner, splitter, video player, even a video player, and a virtual keyboard. And so, so on. Um, we also have a Kiwi community maintainer garden. Yeah. But it's not that kind of garden you need to water. It's the kind of garden you need to maintain. And our garden is full of flowers. Kiwi garden is hosted at github.com slash Kiwi garden. And Kiwi garden is an organization for developers of Kiwi widgets, add-ons, and related software. As we have some example, ZBarCam is a real-time barcode and QR code scanner which is using the camera. It's built on top of Kiwi and works with both Python and ZBar Lite. And we also have MapView, which is a Kiwi widget for displaying interactive maps. It has been designed with a lot of inspiration to Libet, Champlain, and Leaflet, and Graph, and a lot, a lot, a lot of flower. Feel free to check it out at this URL. Um, freedom. Well, why freedom? 
goes Kiwi provides the breaks as, as seen previously our community a garden full of flowers but you can even do more yeah because you can create new widgets and customize this in one even if Kiwi comes with your its own set of icons and its UI team, there's no need to stick on it. I'm doing a lot of app development with Kiwi and we are doing a lot of custom widgets and custom uh, UIs. And these are three examples from our community. Uh, one is taken from the wiki and one from our gallery. And yeah, you can check out what Kiwi users are able to achieve at kiwi.org slash gallery.html. But let's talk about the future, or well, at least some, some thoughts about it. Well, I started working on to improve the documentation. Unfortunately, I needed to stop as other things took the priority to the lead. Um, but it's still something we have to do, and mostly readability, because the documentation quite, is quite great. But it needs to be searchable and a little bit better for our community. And we need to involve more in the community to meet up and like things like this one. And yeah, it's a pinky promise. A lot of people are questioning about it. We need to improve the example for our epic or end it. Unfortunately, I'm not uh, uh, able to read or write um, Hindi and Arabic. So we need some help, but we probably found someone which can help us. And uh, some dependencies of Kiwi are also getting an upgrade to support it. Um, it's a work in progress. I was actually working on that last week. We need to update the camera API on both Android and, and iOS. I started from iOS. We are doing, I'm doing a lot of changes. And then we are probably switching to getting some updates to the camera API for Android. And yeah, as I said before, together is better. In, we, need, we need to involve a world Python community in order to make them aware of mobile platforms. As if, if you are Python package maintainer, which is not a, a plain Python one, but as something that needs to be built and compiled, please get in touch with, with us. And if you need some help to get your uh, package to, to mobile platforms. So maybe our recipes are getting to be easy to create, easy to use, and easy to maintain. So please get in touch with me if you have a non-plain Python package and need some help to get it on mobile platforms. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pajamas, for the opportunity. And I hope uh, you liked it. Yeah, thank you very much for showing all this. And of course, it's it's quite interesting. Uh, and I've got one question for this. Yeah. I th when I looked at Kiwi, I saw uh, like a few years ago that there was a pre like a, a, a virtual box image that you could get so that you wouldn't have to install uh, get all the setup right to deploy apps on, on an Android phone. It does something like this exist. So like if I only know Python, but I'm not I'm bad at getting all the other setup ready to deploy an app. Is there a virtual image at the moment? Well, the, the virtual image doesn't exist anymore as uh, uh, we had a lot of issues to maintain it. Um, considering that uh, um, Kiwi US, Python 400 and Bulldozer are also able to run on uh, pipelines like uh, GitHub Actions 1, mm -hmm. uh, you can use that uh, if you want to. But it, it's quite easy to um, use Python for Android on Ubuntu or other um, distro on Linux. And on macOS, by, for um, developing, uh, for developing uh, uh, Kiwi AUS applications, it is also quite easy to, um, to solve. So. OK. So. It, it, I think I'll I'll have to have another look at this. <laughs> um, it's uh, that there are many things where Python is not so good in, and one of these things is like developing mobile things. So it's 
it's really interesting to see how far you got. And also, I, I really like that you had the iOS on the list as well, because if you're developing something that only works on half of the uh, phones out there, then that's, of course, a, a, a thing that well, people might think, I'm not going to even look at Kiwi, because I'm not going to be able to run the code I uh, wrote on, on an iPhone. So it's... Well, it, it's running. I, I have uh, some um, uh, production apps on both uh, Android and uh, iOS. Uh, mm. the marketplace, so no issues even with the marketplace. Uh, as I said before, um, there's an example for iOS. You need to statically link everything because Apple doesn't like dynamics more than the library. <laughs> so uh, if you uh, we, we have been able to statically link everything, and now mm. it's working. So if so, if people uh, want to get into Kiwi, uh, where is the best place to look for help? If you think, oh, I've tried this and now I'm stuck with something, how well, can I we, chat with other people? Uh, we just uh, um, updated the website, and now the website uh, um, on the footer uh, as uh, we, we have um, a couple of links: one uh, for Google Groups and one for uh, Discord, uh, where we have a lot of support channels. And a lot of mm -hmm. people. Uh, we are probably making a change on the score uh, to support uh, farms, but it, it's it's quite a it's quite interesting community. <laughs> so, which which of these two is the the more active one, or is it just half? Um, half? Both, both, both. <laughs> okay. uh, Kiwi uh, on uh, Google Groups and Kiwi on the score. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm usually I'm on the score, but a lot of people. Are replying to the people on uh, Google Groups. Mm. It's just it's, a uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> do 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 you also uh, uh, collect feedback of people using Kiwi in the wild, so that you have like a little showcase of what people have been doing with it in the last years? Um, well, we have our, our gallery. People are encouraged us to to send uh, pull requests to our website, so we can. Uh, update uh, the the gallery um mm -hmm. but yeah we, we probably also need uh, about the future to um involve more uh, companies because uh, I, I think that a lot of companies are using kiwi uh sometimes i look at linkedin yeah. if someone is using kiwi so to get in touch yeah. with them and get them into uh into kiwi uh, you know to, to support us and so yeah yeah, I think uh, I think it would be useful to just get more people interested in that by just showing. Oh, these are the cool things we've done with Kiwi, and especially if like if you're a company, you say, "Oh, I did something with Kiwi, and I've been using it for a year or two, and it's really stable, and we really like it." Because if you're deciding on uh, what frameworks to do or what to use in the future, that's what you're looking for as a company yeah. to say, oh, yeah. I've had I've something that's been around for a longer time and that has proven and that there are people uh, saying, oh, yeah, I, I love this so much. You should be using it as well. So this was really great. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you. And I hope to see you on some of the other Python conferences, maybe in person. And I'd, lo I'd love to chat to you about this a little bit more. Um, and <laughs> if anybody else uh, has questions to you, sh how should they contact you? Oh, I'm freezing? No, I'm. Uh, uh, my picture was frozen a little bit. If anybody yeah. else has a question, uh, how should they contact you? Uh, oh, well, um, we are GitHub. Uh, I have some links in GitHub. I also have a website where I have my um, my email, or you can get in touch with me on Discord on the Kiwi uh, server. Okay, so thanks again, and enjoy the rest of the.